What's good, Teacup Gang? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Tiana G, aka T. Welcome to Cooking with T. Um, I'm gonna be making a tuna crudo today. I have a beautiful piece of dry aged tuna that I cannot wait to use. I also have some delicious nectarines because it is now officially stone fruit season and nothing screams summer to me like a nectarine. So I really wanted to use that nice sweetness and that freshness from that and I think it's gonna be absolutely fantastic with some tuna. We also have some avocados, we have some limes and uh, you know, some citrus to kind of like spruce that up. We're gonna kind of just like make it up as it goes. I do not have a recipe, it's just me 100% completely in my bag, being creative and making something damn delicious, per usual. So the recipe is gonna be down below in the deets whenever I do decide to come up with that. But yeah, let's have fun, let's create something delicious. Uh, if you guys have not yet tapped in with me on my social media links, it's those are gonna be down below in the deets as well. But click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get it. Okay, so we're gonna start off by juicing the nectarines. I think that's the best way to go about this. I was originally gonna just blend them um, and then hang them, but let's just juice them. We can cut around the seed like this actually. And take up whatever flesh we can and then we'll just disregard the seed part it smells so good right now it smells absolutely delicious I'm gonna turn my juicer on Okay, so the nectarines are juiced. I wanna add in about half of a Fresno to start to kind of just see what that looks like or what that tastes like. Apparently, nectarine juice is pretty thick. She's thick. Look at that, it's getting body. I imagined that this would come through more like liquidy. You know what I mean? But it's giving like smoothie. It's not getting water. Mm, it tastes delicious, but the heat that I'm looking for is not all the way there. So I am gonna add the whole Fresno. So we're gonna taste this. It's not spicy enough for me. I'm gonna be adding in a Fresno and a little bit of a jalapeno that I have not finished using. So I'm gonna pop that into... Ooh, that's spicy. That is spicy. I smell the spice. Definitely giving. I'm just gonna give this a little mixy mix. That tastes delicious. Since the nectarine juice situation did not necessarily turn into a juice, it's still giving smoothie. It's really thick still. She's thick. She's thick. All right. So we're going to strain it so I can have more of a water-like consistency. Um, I have a plastic container and a towel here. I have some twine. So the towel is on top of the container. Then we're gonna take the twine and go around the edges of the container and kind of push it snugly. And then we're going to tie Right here, you see, you tie like that, tight, really tight. And then we're going to knot it like that so that it doesn't move, okay? And then from here, we can cut the twine. Now we're gonna take our nectarine concoction and we're just going to pop it on top of the towel. You can kind of like push this down a little bit to make more of like a well well large enough for the nectarine juice. So I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and let it do what it do. I think some garlic chips would be really, really nice addition to this. So we're gonna take some garlic and remove it from the peel. Um, I don't wanna really smush down to release the, the peel from the garlic because I want the integrity of the garlic shape to stay. Cause I'm gonna slice it really thin. I think it's gonna look really nice like that. So now that I have patiently 
peeled the garlic. This probably might be too much for what I'm doing, but I feel like I could always use this, could always have it on deck. Um, I'm gonna be making garlic chips. So I'm just gonna try to slice as thinly as I possibly can. We can go ahead and cut this little piece off right there. I think that, that looks good, that looks better. So once it gets to like the little butt, don't even try to save it, be careful, watch your fingers. All right, there we have it. Time to fry some garlic chips. Okay, so as you can see, our garlic chips are inside the oil. I did not heat the oil up before adding the garlic chips in. You wanna start off with cool oil. You wanna make sure you're not adding the garlic into hot oil or else you're gonna risk burning it. You can do this with shot fried shallots, you can do this with fried onions. My foolproof way of making some kind of crispy alumi chip. You wanna make sure you're kind of just like constantly moving it around. So as you can see right now, the bubbles are fairly large. So that means that there's still lots of moisture inside of the actual garlic. And in order to make it a nice crispy chip, we have to remove the moisture from the garlic. We're just pretty much going to continue to cook these until the bubbles inside are very tiny or there are none at all. The garlic chips are starting to get a little bit of color on them and the bubbles are kind of going away. Not really going away, but they're becoming smaller, which is what we want. So as you can see, the bubbles are starting to become smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm gonna turn it off because this can turn really quickly. So immediately I'm taking it out of the oil and onto a paper towel. Okay, this oil is straight gas. Do not throw this away. You can use it to cook whatever you wanna cook. It's pretty much now garlic oil. And then in here we have our garlic chips that we're gonna add just some salt to. And there we have it. How easy that was. Add them into a smaller ramekin and get them off of this. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. In the Philippines, they actually sell garlic like that as snacks. Let's get into slicing up some tuna. So I've got my tuna steak, and we're gonna start that. I'm thinking that I wanna do kind of just long slices for this. I'm gonna cut this in half, so it's more manageable for me. So as far as slicing, I'm gonna do slices like this. It would have helped if I froze the tuna. <laughs> a lot actually, but I didn't, so. Slice into pieces. So our tuna is sliced, and I'm gonna pop this into the fridge. So we're going to be getting into some cucumber slices, because I have some cucumbers, and I think it's gonna add for a nice crunch, freshness to our crudo. So we're just going to slice our cucumbers pretty thinly. You wanna make sure it's thin or else when you roll it up like this, it's not gonna hold, you know? So you wanna make sure, I'm gonna go a little bit thinner than that actually. You're gonna slice. And we're just going to roll, roll, roll. And it should stay on its own, like this thicker it won't stay on its own so that's the vibe we're going for here um, you don't have to slice the cucumber this way you can slice them around you can slice them out of bias I just think it's gonna add for a nice look to this crudo that we're putting together here a few more times I think seven per plate will look pretty nice so I'm gonna go seven a cucumber on a crudo. I actually have something kind of similar on my Instagram if you guys haven't seen it. We have our cucumbers hanging out here. I also have a little bit of cilantro and some um, ice cold water shocking. I have the garlic chips, avocados will cut to order. And then we're gonna get into the citrus because we're gonna add this into our nectarine and Fresno mix. I want to show y'all the progress of our Fresno nectarine water. It's sitting down here at the bottom, as you can see. At the top, we're still straining. But I think it looks great so far. I'm gonna let it strain for a few mo more moments because I think this looks like enough to do one plate, and then I'll just 
continue to let the rest of it hang. Okay, so I decided we're gonna add some rice chips um, to our crudo. I have so many rice papers, and we have that delicious garlic oil that we just fried, so I think it's gonna add for some nice height, it's gonna look cool, it's gonna look amazing. So I have the oil getting hot, and yeah, we're gonna fry some rice chips. So as you can see, I'm just adding in the rice paper into the garlic oil and they puff up very fast. If you hold the tweezers or push them down with something, they kind of curl up and cook into these kind of cool looking shapes like this. Okay, so as you can imagine, rice paper does not really taste like much. So I'm going to be taking some Szechuan peppercorns aka green peppercorns and popping them into a mortar and pestle. Just gonna kind of break them up a little bit till they're fragrant. Once it's kind of ground up, I'm just gonna take some of it and sprinkle it onto our chips here. Depending on how finely you want the Szechuan peppercorn, you could like grind it up. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it kind of whole. This is gonna add for a nice fragrant floral note, but it's also gonna add a numbing effect to the chip, kind of makes your mouth feel a little bit numb. I'm gonna take whatever I have from the strained product and pop it into the bowl and then put this back on there because I still have a lot more that I would like to strain, but for now, to just make one order, I'm gonna take what we have in here, I'm gonna pop it into a bowl. As you can see, it's a lot clearer and a lot lighter than what it was looking like before, which is exactly what I wanted. So now we're gonna go ahead and brighten this uh, nectarine Fresno situation up with a little bit of lime juice, lemon juice, and some zest. That's delicious. I'm actually gonna be adding in some salt because I didn't season it when we juiced it. Let's taste this. Gas. I'm gonna add more lime juice actually i think it needs to be like really really bright and then a little bit of lemon juice as well just a teensy bit i'm not even kidding that is damn delicious we're gonna add a nectarine fresno juice to the bottom here I have the tuna here, and I'm gonna season the tuna with a little bit of Malden salt. And then we're gonna start by placing some of the tuna onto the plate here. Some tuna is going down on the plate. And we're gonna start to add our cucumbers gonna add for some height and some freshness as well which is really nice I'm gonna take an avocado and I'm just gonna spoon it out like this this avocado is dang perfect actually and then we're gonna just do some slices like that and from here I'm gonna decide just a little slice like that there just on top of the fish in just random areas there, right there. And then from here, we're going to get into some Fresno chili, some areas, just a few pieces here and there. There is some kick in the uh, nectarine water, but it's not like spicy. I think that this is also gonna add for a nice pop of color as well as some heat. They're not pickled at all, so do keep that in mind. Um, debating on, depending on how Spicy, you can handle your stuff. I'm a spicy girl, so welcome to my spicy world. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and I love garlic, so I'm gonna add some garlic chips kind of just all over on top of the fish, if you will, or on top of anything really, because you really don't wanna, you kinda wanna avoid it being on the water. 
into some cilantro. As far as the cilantro goes, I really like these smaller looking pieces like this. I think that's gonna be really amazing. I'm going to add a tiny bit of soy to the dish. A splash. It's gonna kind of bleed into it and it's gonna add for a nice little umami depth to the plate. And now I'm gonna add our cilantro. So we're gonna do cilantro pieces here and there. Here, here. Almost done, y'all. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of lime zest. Just a touch, very, very light. I think this is it. This is our crudo. This is our tuna nectarine crudo. Gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Let's get into it, yes? Oh, actually, let's not get into it quite yet. Forgot my edible flowers and my rice chips. So for color, we can have edible flowers. A little orange, never hurt nobody. I love orange, plays with the nectarine well. And we're gonna take our rice paper chips and add them into some areas, just like a few. One, two, you know, here and there. There we have it, this is what the finished plate looks like. I think it looks absolutely stunning. Let's get into tasting it now. Let's do it. I'm gonna grab a piece of tuna, avocado, chippy, cucumber. No, this is crazy. This is crazy. Bro, why is this so good? Did I really do that? No, this is gas. That nectarine water is so refreshing. Absolutely phenomenal. With the tuna and the avocado and the Fresno in a bite, that Szechuan pepper, some crispness, some allium crunchiness from that garlic. That being said, I'm in my bag, but I'm in his too. So every time you see me, that's why I got some new shoes. Real hot girl <laughs> I might like it. But the tuna is so rich and so fatty and it's dry aged and it's absolutely delicious. Look at that bite. Look at that bite. That's some serious right there. My mouth is actually going numb right now because of that Szechuan. All right, teacups, thank you so much for tapping into another episode of Cooking with Tea. I hope you guys enjoyed um, my tuna nectarine a vibe crudo was really fun to make. I loved just kind of like coming up with it on the go. It was damn delicious. The recipe is going to be down below in the deets. Let me know what you guys thought of the crudo. Let me know what you guys would like to see next on Cooking with Tea or Tea Streets and even Tea's World, which is the vlog space that I am going to tap into, I swear. But I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing summer. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.